For quite a while now, the Tiberon Prime was the best example for the ultimate assault rifle. It combines all of the great aspects of basically any assault rifle. It's got huge damage, it's got build diversity, and it's got flexibility as well. The one thing that the Tiberon Prime was not good at was being basically a bullet hose. But for that, you had things like the Prisma Gorgon, or perhaps the Soma Prime, Tenora, and so on and so forth. At launch, this weapon featured a Riven Disposition of 5 out of 5. It was basically godlike. Unfortunately, well of course the Riven Disposition did get nerfed over time and now it's sitting at a measly 2 out of 5. The original bit to the Tiberon Prime was the fact that it was the only assault rifle that had all three proeminent fire modes. So you had your burst, and you still have your burst. In this mode you're gonna be firing three bullets in rapid succession. You have your semi-automatic. And you go shot by shot action in this fire mode and of course the last one will be automatic. Unfortunately or fortunately depending on your point of view the Tiberon Prime is no longer original in this aspect now we have the Kuva Hind. The Hind was essentially a forgotten weapon one of the most obscure weapons in Warframe it was it was it is still mastery rank nothing and it's basically worthless but the Kuva Hind however is a serious contender for the ultimate assault rifle. What we're going to be doing next is basically a comparison between the two, but careful because this one is a tad tricky. When it comes to accuracy in burst fire mode, so basically we got to compare burst, semi and automatic fire modes each one by one. In burst fire mode we got the same accuracy of 33.3. From my humble point of view both weapons are compatible with heavy caliber, so if that's the way you want to go, go for it 100%. It's great for everything but super long range shots, so there you go, some bullets might be flying off the crosshairs with heavy cal. Critical chance 28% versus 25%, so 3% extra in the favor of the Tiberon Prime, but this is where the Tiberon Prime really differentiates itself uh, over the Kuva Hand 3.0 critical multiplier versus 2.1x. Now the normal, let's call a normal critical multiplier would be 2.0, the Tiberon Prime has a pretty huge critical multiplier for just semi-automatic mode. The fire rate however is largely in favor of the Kuva Hind 9.09 .09 versus 7.38 and this is where the Kuva Hind kind of pulls away a little bit. You gotta more than double the magazine size, 90 versus 42 and you will see this is a huge advantage for the Kuva Hen. Noise alarming of course, the difference in reload speed isn't really all that high, 2 versus 2.3, it's not negligible but it's not something to go like wow, huge difference about. Status chance, now this is a huge difference, 33% in favor of the Kuva Hen, so 33% versus 20%, now that's a pretty huge difference. When we get to the damage, there's two things to note. First off, the damage layout. The damage layout is in favor of the Kuva Hen simply because you got Slash the highest with a 33% status chance. So you're going to be able to proc Slash off the weapon's base status chance a whole lot easier than it is in the case of the Tiberon Prime when you have Puncture the highest IPS. When it comes to the damage values, you will say that, hold on man, the Tiberon Prime deals a lot more damage, right? Well wrong, because we're talking about the Kuva weapon, and Kuva weapons will be having bonus elemental damage depending on your luck, how much did you manage to roll, and of course, what progenitor did you choose. In my case, this is a 50% roll on the Kuva hand. Let me show you. This is a 50% toxin roll, and if I go and have a look at my damage in burst mode, so the first fire mode, you'll see I get an extra 14.6 toxin, which does not show up in that comparison screen. Another weird little note, you'll see that instead of having 7.5, I have 7.4, 7.4, instead of 15, I got 14.7. It's still weird when it comes to Guva weapons. These still did not manage to iron out all the bugs just yet, so bear that one in mind. So if we take into account elemental damage bonuses, okay, let's take 50%, the one we have at our disposal right now, into account, it kind of evens out in terms of damage. So they both deal mostly the same base damage, and of course the Kuva Hand has the advantage because it's, well, it's a bit more flexible. If you don't like Toxin on your Kuva Hand, you can replace it the next time you get another Hand with a different element and so on and so forth. We have some control over the base damage of the Kuva weapon, so that's something worth keeping in mind. Now let's move on to semi-automatic mode. 33.3 versus 28.6. I don't get this. Why 28.6 here? Why 33.3 here? And he, it doesn't really make any sense, but there you go. The Tiberon Prime does have an advantage in accuracy. 30% critical chance versus 37% critical chance in favor of the Kuva Hand. 2.9x critical multiplier, 3.4 for the Tiberon Prime. So while the Hand does have a higher critical chance, 37% is awesome. 
that if it on Prime still has the superior multiplier at 3.4x. Fire rate of 6 for the Tiberon Prime, 2.5 for the Kuva Hen, though it is semi-automatic, so take it with a grain of salt. We're talking about the semi-fire mode. Again, the advantage of the magazine, the disadvantage of the reload speed, noise alarming, status chance once again in favor of the Kuva Hen at 21%. And when it comes to the damage, this time, my friends, it's a slaughter between the two because the Kuva Hen basically has a lot more base damage in semi-automatic mode than the Tiberon Prime. On the other hand, it fires slower, right? And keep in mind that you still don't see the elemental damage here. Add 18 plus 18 plus 54, then add 50% toxin to that, and then you get the whole base damage in uh, semi-automatic mode. In automatic fire mode, I wanted to completely ignore this one. Honestly, if you guys want an automatic rifle that can do really crazy things, this, these are not it, okay? You want a bullet hose, you want a Tenora, you want a Soma Prime, you want a Prisma Gorgon, something like that. Not these weapons. But since we're here, critical chance once again in favor of the Kuva Hen, 21% versus 16%. Much lower critical multiplier, only 1.9x opposed to 2.8x. But again, you got a high critical multiplier with a low critical chance. It's kind of weird, this fire mode on the T-Baron, almost. Better fire rate, and it does better when it comes to automatic for the um, Kuva Hand. And again, that big advantage of more than double the magazine size, which again, matters a whole lot when it comes to automatic weapons. Same reload, of course. Status chance, minor difference, doesn't really matter. And again, when it comes to damage, if you factor in, let's say, a 50% increase in a, of an element, you're gonna come roughly to the same numbers, give or take. So as you can see, they're pretty comparable when it comes to stats. It's finally time to actually try out some builds. And yes, we'll talk about Riven Disposition and all whatnot. This will be the standard build we're gonna be testing on both weapons, then we're gonna go to a crit bleed build, all right? We're gonna test all the free fire modes, but again, I still believe that the automatic mode should be mostly ignored. Level 120 Corrupted Heavy Goons, and we're gonna go with Burst on this column right here. Look at the Tiber on Prime, just chomp through targets. Man, I love this weapon. I used it for so long. It was always my example. If you want one of the best assault rifles, or perhaps even the best, more flexible, and looks cool too, okay, go for the Tiber on Prime. Now let's go semi. This is when we have our highest critical chance, critical damage, yes, on the Tiber on Prime. And of course, this semi automatic mode is a bit more catered to using something like Hunter Munitions, but we'll do that just a bit later. An elemental setup such as this is a bit more catered for towards using automatic fire mode, which is what we're gonna be doing up next. I also love the really quick reload. Again, I don't think that this fire mode, automatic fire mode, is ideal on these weapons, but they do pack a punch. As you can see, it can tear through a corrupted heavy gunner with relative ease. And the reload is pretty quick, even though you have only 42 bullets in this magazine. And I think that's pretty much it for the t on Prime. Next, let's try out the Kuva Hand with the exact same build. There's really no need to change up the builds between these two weapons considering how they stack up. So we're gonna be using the exact same thing and I don't remember if I have the exact same build on this one. Wait, this is the Riven. Ah, God damn it! Well, you know what comes next, right? There we go, exact same build as before. And by the way, when it comes to the weapon Excellus mod slot on both weapons, if you guys wanna use anything, not that you do, you can go for something like Stabilizer or Vigilante Supplies. Again, you're not gonna be able to populate this slot right here with something that will tremendously increase your DPS because, well, there you go, the basically two car toys. So, there's that. One more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120 and we're gonna go through all of the free fire modes as before. First off, Burst Fire Mode. Yeah. It does feel a little bit more powerful, and you're gonna ask why. Why, man? The, the stats were so similar. Because of the status chance. Okay, there's a huge difference when it comes to status chance. In this case, critical chance doesn't help me as much as status chance. I am removing that armor a whole lot more efficiently than before. It's a huge difference in status chance when it comes to burst fire mode between the two weapons. If I change the semi, though... Things become a bit more similar, don't they? So for an elemental build, from my point of view, if that's what you want to go, yes, you go for the Kuva. It's superior to the Tiberon Prime, and I can't even believe that I'm saying that out loud, but it's simply better. It's just as simple as that. If I go for... I was trying even to ignore the the automatic mode, because that's where the Tiberon Prime really gets cream, because it has a higher magazine. But Well, we gotta be fair and all whatnot. I can't be biased towards the Tiberon just because I like it more. Yeah, I like it more. It looks cooler. But in terms of power, well, at least for this build. Automatic, yeah? Let's reload. Full 90 magazine. 
Look at this. You get it? I think it's a pretty clear picture. I still had 36 bullets. I, re I reloaded basically at a reflex. Because that's what I do with the T-Bell. Not that it's a huge pain, but yeah, you get the general idea. So for an elemental setup, definitely go for the Kuva Hand. Again, and it's not even a 60% roll, this one. It's a 49% or something like that, so you can get even more powerful weapons. And once again, I recommend you going for Toxin. If at any point you guys want to know more details, and why are we using this build? Why not that build? Why this mod or not that mod? Link the cards right now, my friends. You're going to see the full guides on both the Hind and the T-Baron Prime. Now it's time to talk about slash builds and more importantly hunter munitions base builds. Hunter munitions is still extremely powerful and you can go about a slash build in a number of different ways. You can even go for the weapons IPS and put on Fang Fusillate. I don't recommend it. This mod unfortunately does not bring a whole lot of power to this weapon. It's a much more smarter and more efficient approach to go for hunter munitions and pump it up with Argon Scope. Of course more crits will be meaning more chances to slash out of hunter munitions. Orange crits will be meaning more critical damage. Therefore for higher value slashes. Here's another advantage that the Kuva Hint has over the Tiberon Prime. It can make the Viral Elemental combo with a single 60-60 mod. So if you choose to go for a Toxin Progenitor like I have or for a Cold Progenitor, a single 60-60 mod will mean that you get Viral on your targets, which is huge for any slash base build. So bear that one in mind. Bladed Rounds is here as well and we're gonna be getting more critical damage, which means higher value slashes, but if you don't fancy on kill effects, you can go for something like Heavy Caliber, but in this case I prefer to keep my accuracy, so bear that one in mind. The rest of the mods are mandatory. Once again, Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120, we're gonna go for Burst, Semi and Automatic. Even though a slash builds, slash builds on these weapons uh, shine a lot more in Semi and Burst. Now, first I'm gonna have to get a kill on this target because I do want to get my critical damage extra from Bladed Round. There we go, we got a kill. Three to four shots in a Corrupted Heavy Goon level 120, watch the bleeds, 1,179. If you get a little bit lucky, you can even do it in two bursts. But if not, just go for three bursts, so that's gonna be one, and a two, and a three. Take a look at the slashes. Normally the test, if you will, for any slash build is hit a target till about 50%, then watch the slashes deal the damage. Now we're gonna reload. Go back to 90 bullets, go to semi-automatic mode, and we're gonna go shot by shot action in this corrupted heavy gunner. I don't even have the extra critical damage right now. Take a look at that. Absolutely crazy. One shot in the target. Take a look at that. Because of multi-shot, I got two slashes and no viral app. If I had a viral app, that would have been a one shot. So yes, with this build, you can get one shots on corrupted heavy goons. But yes, a couple of planets need to align. But as you can see, the build. I mean, come on. Take a look. It's extremely, extremely potent due to the high critical chance on this weapon. And the high status chance, it's easy to apply viral as well. Beautiful. Absolutely freaking phenomenal. Now, one more thing. We're gonna do automatic mode. With this one, same corrupted heavy goons as before. Then we're gonna be moving over to the T-Baron Prime. Automatic mode. Again, we're gonna hit this target till about 50% HP. Then watch the slashes deal the damage. Wait for the buff from... Um, Bladed rounds, now we got extra critical damage, which will be meaning more damage and more slash value. A thousand plus! A thousand plus, man! For uh, automatic mode, that's definitely not bad. Again, this weapon is an absolute beast. A powerhouse of a weapon. Beautiful. Just freaking beautiful. Now it's time for the T-Baron Prime and see how it stacks up. And we're going to be using mostly a similar build. Not a hundred percent similar because we cannot... Now the reason why I can't use the exact same build on the T-Baron Prime is because the T-Baron does not have a base elemental damage like the Kuva Hind. In my case, I would have to use two 60-60 mods to get my Viral application, which is not worth. In the case of the T-Baron Prime, it's better to force critical chance, multi-shot and damage, which is why we're gonna be using Heavy Caliber and Vigilante Armaments. This is the more powerful slash build for this weapon, again, because I don't have to use two of the 60-60 mods. You can replace the Vigilante Armaments with something like uh, Bladed Rounds, if you so desire. That's also a very good idea. Now, the Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120, and you will see that the results are neck and neck on this web on these weapons when it comes to slash builds. We're gonna go burst. I think that's more than enough. Take a look at the values. 
Absolutely freaking insane, man. I just love this weapon. It sounds good. It feels good. Free burst in my target. Take a look. No viral application, so I don't need to worry about things like, oh my god, my viral slip off my target. Now it's not gonna die. I prefer builds which don't have viral in the mix because it's one more thing I need to worry about. But they are pretty potent. In the case of the t on Prime, I would go for pure crit. Let's go to semi now. Take a look at it. Just chumps through it, man. See that red slash? Beautiful. A red hit, not red slash. 2000 plus on a bleed, man. That is just beautiful. And you might say, wait, what? why do you get such higher value slashes? Ah! You remember that mod we put on that most people don't, well, a lot of people don't like? Yeah, heavy caliber. That's the main reason why you get a higher value slashes right now. Even though I don't have bladed rounds, I do have heavy caliber. And heavy caliber is a bit more guaranteed, so there's that. You know, you don't need a kill to actually get a benefit from it. And last two in automatic mode. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 1700 bleeds on the target. So which is better for a slash build? Should you go for the Kuva Hint or should you rely on the T-Baron Prime? And to be honest, there's really not that much between these two weapons when it comes to a slash build. Even though I am using slightly different builds just to bring out the power of each weapon, each weapon's strength, there's really not a whole lot when it comes to slash builds. So if you prefer slash builds, I would go like this. If you want to go semi-automatic mode, I would definitely use the Hint, okay, for a semi-automatic slash build if you want to go burst slash then i would still be using the t on prime as for automatic sorry i just don't care <laughs> all that much about automatic fire mode again there are plenty of other assault rifles which do a better job in automatic so it's time to draw some conclusions right but to do that we're gonna have to talk about riven disposition t on prime two out of five kuva hint three out of five how long it will stay at 3 out of 5, I have no clue, because again, when it comes to Warframe, we have a lot of extremely powerful weapons now, a lot of extremely powerful primaries, so even the t -Baron Prime with all its mind did not get to 1 out of 5 just yet. Honestly, it's a pretty difficult call to make between these two weapons, they're both powerhouses, if I am forced to choose one, then I'm gonna go for the more uglier one, from a power point of view, from a sheer dps point of view i'm gonna go for the kuva hand simply because it is more flexible because i can control that base damage and it deals more damage at the end of the day but from a subjective point of view and the weapon that i still prefer between the two is gonna be the t baron prime thank you guys so much for watching like favorite share and subscribe if you enjoy the content if you got any sorts of feedback for me i would love to read it in the comment section down below also in the comment section down below if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, in all honesty, I can exactly promise you that it'll be done by next time or even within a week because these things, well, can take a little bit of time to make, but I can promise you that I will be reading through each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. One last thing and then I'll go. Let me know in the comment section down below which is your favorite, the t on Prime or the Kuva Hint. Until next time, my friends, bye-bye.